and then uh, he, he raises up the cucumber and they react and everything. And the last thing he says <laughs> before like the video ends, he, he just goes, yeah, packing. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's great. So we were at the dentist, uh, the orthodontist today, and I brought these pretzel chips and pretzel sticks with me so my kids could snack on them. And I was prepared today. Mm -hmm. I brought... And everything all set up, no problems, snacks, I had an answer for everything. Yep. People comment on how like well prepared I was to bring four kids to a doctor's office. Yeah. And then this little girl like walks up and we're eating pretzels and she's, she's got like a Ziploc bag too. Also yep. got pretzels. Oh, there you go. Everybody's keen to the pretzels. Everybody likes the pretzels. Yeah. Does your son eat, eat, eat pretzels? Yeah, he loves pretzels. We've been getting these, uh, this is not a sponsor, but I would gladly, uh, uh, miss, uh, I think it's just dots. Um, okay, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, anyway, they're like, um, they're like seasoned pretzel sticks. Oh, nice. And, uh, they're really good. The only reason I'm eating some now is because my kids want them all day and then they don't finish them. Ah. So I get this little plate of leftovers. <laughs> yep. This is yep. Oliver's special blue plate. He won't eat off of any other plate. <laughs> Okay. So I have to wash this plate. I have to make sure it makes the 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 machine tonight or tomorrow <laughs> they'll be held to pay. <laughs> right, right. There's something else I wanted to bring to your attention. I wanted to ask you. It's like a, I had a moral, a, a brief moral quandary that I quickly got past, but I, I was curious to get your thoughts on it. Okay. So we're picking up groceries uh, recently at Walmart and uh, the dude walks over and it's the same guy who always delivers them to me. And he says, yeah, Mr. Dempsey. I'm like, hey. Uh, and then he puts the groceries in the car and- uh, he's like, all right, see ya. And and he starts to walk away and I'm looking over at them and like uh, over the years, like maybe twice a year, I like something major is wrong and I have to check them all the time. Yeah. And, uh, so I look over and like, I noticed there's just a couple things that we probably didn't order. And my mm. wife handles like the Walmart, like. List. Yep. So I just, yep. I'm just a bag man. I just pick it up. Yep. 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 And so uh, I'm like, I'm like the transporter. <laughs> and so yes. I don't, I don't tend to look at the cargo. It's not, it's not how I do business. Um, yeah. But much like the transporter in the transporter, I was like, something's wrong. And I looked yeah. at the cargo and uh, instead of a woman tied up, um, <laughs> yes. being delivered yep. to God knows where, it was a bunch of other people's groceries. It was very clearly uh. not ours. And by the time I realized it, the dude's like back in the store. And I was like, okay, I should let him know. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then I was like, well, hold on, hold on, Connor. And I thought about it. So first I looked at my list of Walmart. Most of what we wanted, which is a very small haul was in mm -hmm. this bag. Okay. Um, there was only a couple things missing, like, you know, disinfecting spray. And then like one other thing that was not like, like a small snack or something. I was like, all right, that, that's, we didn't really yeah. lose anything. And what we gained was substantial. I got like, like 10 pounds of ground beef. Whoa. Um, a lot of salad, like a lot of romaine lettuce. Yeah. Um, I got two whole things of organic milk. Uh -huh. Um, I got cookie dough. Nice. Um, I got a big ass like tub of feta cheese. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, and just a few other things. I was like, uh, I mean, I would eat all this. There was like one thing that I didn't, that I didn't want to eat. And it's just some bag of chips or something. Sure. And I was like, this is pretty good stuff. And I've been through it with Walmart before. I know that from previous experience, if I want to return something, you can't just go inside and be like, Hey, like you, you can't, once the groceries are in your car, that branch, it's really not their problem anymore. Once something yeah. happens, they're like, you got to call the corporate number mm. for the corporate number, like, which is going to deal with, you know, thousands of these nationwide. Right. And I was like, okay. And I know from previous experience that that's like a huge hassle. And I was like, I'm not going to do that because they never answer. Like they, that's the thing. Last time I did it, it just didn't answer. And like, I had to yeah. do all this complicated shit through the app and it was terrible. Um, and so I was like, I don't know. And I also know from working in food service and just from being an experienced adult that they're not going to take the food. They can't take this food back mm -hmm. once they take it. Like once they deliver it, there's, there's, there's liability. I could have poisoned the food and <laughs> right. returned it to right. them, you know, injected it with rat, rat poison <laughs> or yeah, 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 yeah. ricin. Right. Um, 
And so I was like, I'm just going to take this. And mm-hmm. I just drove it home. I put it in the fridge or whatever. And then like, you know, a few hours later, my wife's looking in the fridge. She's like, why did we buy all this? I was like, check it out. It was free. <laughs> you know, it was free. Like we paid yeah. like whatever, $40 for what our order was supposed to be. We easily yeah. got 70, $80 worth of groceries here. Yeah. Like, all right. So that meets in my free, my freezer right now. I still haven't figured out what to do with it, but I made, I baked those cookies yesterday. Yep. They're all gone. They were delicious and they tasted, Sweet. tasted like opportunity. Right, right, right. Um, And the question being like, you know, I, I, like I said, I had a brief moral quandary and then I completely disregarded it because I, it, the way I saw it in that situation, nothing is to be done. The food is either sure. consumed or it is wasted. And, sure. and, uh, as long as my friend, uh, my friend, uh, what's his, I don't even know his name. <laughs> my friend, <laughs> my friend, what's his face. As yeah. long as he doesn't get fired, um, yep. for delivering the wrong groceries. And when that person shows up and wonders where all their ground beef and, and milk is right. Uh, we're good. And he was, he's been yep. there like the last three weeks. So I think we're, I think we're, I think we're so safe. Fine. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I should tip him. Right. There yeah. you go. I don't know. Have you ever had a, have you ever benefited from incompetence before? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, for sure. There's been times where things are not mine that are, that become mine, um, due to people, you know, whatever. But like my, my thought on all that is sort of similar to yours. It's, I know you can't take this back. Yeah. And if I give this to you, like, let's say you go to Chick-fil-A or whatever, and you know, they give you extra, an extra sandwich and an extra mac and cheese. It's like, you can't take this back. I can yeah. hand it to you and tell you this isn't mine, but you, you're not supposed to take it back. Right. And then I feel there's been a couple of times where I've done that and they have taken it back. And then I feel really bad. Cause I'm like, is that going to go back like out to the next person? And then also, what does that say about what I'm eating here? How frequently has my food been returned by someone else? Yeah. So I feel like a weird sense of obligation to like prevent that from happening to yeah. somebody else. Like if I give it to them, I want to see them put it in the trash can or else I'd be, I, I should be like, no, no, hold on, hold on. That doesn't need to go back on there. And I wish I had like a badge I could flash and be like, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> food police. <laughs> you you didn't know, but I was a secret food police and I'm here. You need to give me that right now. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, the, the morally correct thing to do is to, is to alert someone to the mistake. Mm-hmm. And if they so like are so inclined, they will allow you to keep the, the, the food from the mistake. And, uh, Yes. And, and, but, they, but there's a chance that they won't, there's a chance that they'll say, we'll just take it back and trash it. Or there's a chance, like I said, that they just give it to the person that's supposed to go to it. either way. Uh, the, the, the technically correct thing to do is probably to alert them to the situation, but there, there, there is no, there is no alternative really. Right. Right. Like the alternative is a good, a good meal goes in the trash can. And, and that also hurts to be like, oh, well, you're just going to take 10 pounds of ground beef and chuck it. Like, I don't, I obviously don't want that to happen. So I would have done the same thing that you did. Um, and just said, you know what, this is a mistake, but you know, whether it benefits me or or it doesn't, it's a mistake. And, you know, it'd be the same as like, if they handed me somebody else's order and it was only like two items right. and I ordered $170 worth of groceries, right. I, I should alert them to the mistake, but I should still be able to keep those items because again, you're just going to trash yeah. them. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I always feel like it's weird, but when it comes to food, if food is given to a person, I would expect that person to keep the food no matter what. And if I were the, the, the owner of that establishment, I would certainly say, no, I can't take that food back. You keep it because, and that's our mistake and we're going to eat it this time. But that person that gave you the wrong thing is going to be held accountable. And Hey man, like you, you can't do this again. Cause you see what you just cost us. Yeah. I, I, I was, I thought of it as what is my obligation? Who is my obligation to in this scenario? And I was like, all right, well yeah. first it's to my house. And so it's like, yeah. all right. Yeah. Did we waste money? Nope. Yeah. We did not waste money. Okay, cool. Do, are we missing items that we really needed? No, not really. Okay. Yeah. And then it was like, okay, my house was covered. Um, what about everyone else? And I was like, then I was thinking about, well, what if they gave it to another customer? That's not right. Um, yeah. 
What if Ronald, that's his name, Ronald, what if Ronald gets fired? Is that his real name or is that a code name now? It's Ronald. His name's Ronald. Okay. Okay. <laughs> McDonald's. Right. Ron, Ronald McDonald. He, uh, and I was, I was like, you know, if Ronald gets fired, then, uh, I like Ronald, but if he got fired over this, then he's made other mistakes and he's, he's made his bed. Yeah. And, yeah but, yeah. but the, the, the main tipping point was this is a gigantic corporation that makes most of its revenue off of groceries. They're doing fine. They treat their workers terribly and they expect a certain amount of losses uh, when they calculate their earnings. And so I was like, you know what? I'm taking this beef. This is mine. (laughs) This is mine's. Right. Well, and and like I said, it's just going to go in the trash. Yeah. So it's like, I'm not going to allow. I've seen it so many times. Like it happens in the drive-thru. It's just like, oh, hey, you gave me like six fries, six supersized fries. Uh, Here you go. And they're like, oh, we can't accept. We can't take it back. Yeah. And it's just. Don't worry about it. And and you're just like, okay, Okay. that's fine. Yeah. And, and like it benefits me Yep. and it, you know, it really isn't that much of a loss for you because you're operating at such a hefty margin and such, and in such quantity that this doesn't really mean anything. It's different if like they handed the food to the people who it belonged to and you ran over there and pushed them down and took it. (laughs) <laughs> like, I just stole it. No, this is mine now. Yeah. Are you like casually strolled by their, you know, vehicle as it's being loaded and like grabbed a bag and yeah. like, aha, uh-huh. um, and you know, Aladdin it, but that, but that's not what happened. <laughs> I Aladdin it. <laughs> Aladdin is now a verb. Um, but it, but yeah, man, like, no, I think I, I would have done the exact same thing. And I know, I know it's, it's it has that tinge of like, ah, uh, did I do the right thing? <laughs> but it's like, I mean, n- yeah, no, but yeah, you know, cause you know, n- cause here's, here's the thing. When you think about like, what's the, who got hurt in the situation, like mm-hmm. you said, it's not the other people cause the other people will get their groceries. Right. It's not, it's not you because you came out on top. Yeah. It's, it's the corporation who made the mistake yeah. and they have no, once that, once that was handed over, there was no recourse for them to not be out money. Yeah. Yeah. So and it like, doesn't matter. And, and there's nothing yeah. I could have done to get those people what they were owed. They're going to show up. Their, their groceries aren't ready. And they'll be like, oh, we made a mistake. And they'll wait like another 20 minutes. And that really sucks. Yeah. But like, unless I sat around and waited for them to show up and let their yeah. food spoil to right. try to give it directly to them, I could be some some weird charlatan who hacked their phone, purchased right. the food, poisoned it, and then waited for them to show up so I could ensure yeah. that I had killed them. Well, well uh, not only that, but, but like, what do you do? Just like stand out and be like... Hey man, I've got you ten pounds of ground beef <laughs> to every car that comes by. Because the first guy that's gonna come by is gonna go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure I did. did, sure. Yeah, I definitely did. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I, I wonder if when you're like when you work at Walmart or you're working a drive through, and then like someone rolls up and goes, "Hey, you made a mistake. You gave me the wrong food," and then you go like, you know, "Hey, okay, here's here's the food you ordered. Keep the other food," you know have a good yeah. night and they drive away. I wonder if like, if it sinks in as soon as that person drives away where you're just like, man, I'm making like minimum wage. Yeah. This company's just giving food away every time I make a mistake. I hate this. Yep. <laughs> I yep. Hate this. Exactly. I would be, exactly. I would, I would, I would, because no one has ever had a happy face when they've given me food that they gave me by mistake. Yeah. I can't keep it. They're always just like, oh yeah, here's the bag. And I'm like, and, I, and okay. so initially you're like, oh, they're just kind of like mad. They made a mistake. But I'm thinking about it. It's like, I just wonder if they're doing the math and they're like, I can't believe we can afford to just give food away, but yep. I can't get a raise. I can't yeah, get exactly. a decent raise. Yeah. We just gave $70 worth of groceries yeah. away <laughs> yes. and they won't, they won't, they won't I, give me an extra I, dollar I'm an hour. I'm not eligible for overtime. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I can't get good health insurance. Yes. Ugh. Yeah. Well, um, let me try to make everyone feel better um, by talking about Mean Girls. Mean Girls. Woo! We have a new student with us. She just moved here from Africa. Welcome. I'm from Michigan. Great. I'm 16. Until today, I was homeschooled. And then it was goodbye, Africa. And hello, high school. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm Janice. This is Damien. Watch out! New meat coming through! This map shows the school's central nervous system. The cafeteria. You got your cool Asians, burnouts, jocks, the greatest people you will ever meet, and the worst. So you've never been to a real school before? Shut up. Shut up! I didn't say anything. Plastics. Who are the plastics? 
They're teen royalty. That's Karen Smith. She is one of the dumbest girls you will ever meet. I'm kind of psychic. Really? It's like I have ESPN or something. Gretchen Wieners. She has two Fendi purses and a silver Lexus. And evil takes a human form in Regina George. She knows everything about everyone. That's why her hair is so big. It's full of secrets. We want to invite you to have lunch with us. Regina seems sweet. Get in, loser. We're going shopping. Your house is really nice. I know, right? Being with the plastics was like leaving the actual world. <laughs> And entering girl world. Have you seen any guys that you think are cute yet? There's this guy in my calculus class. His name's Aaron Samuels. <gasps> no, no. That's Regina's ex-boyfriend. Ex-boyfriends are off limits. I mean, that's just like the rules of feminism. <laughs> Gretchen told me that you like Aaron Samuels. I could talk to him for you if you want. Really? You would do that? I don't want it. You're so hot. <gasps> Why would she do that? She's a life ruiner. I knew how this would be settled in the animal world. But this was girl world. All the fighting had to be sneaky. I want to lose three pounds. There are these nutrition bars my mom used to lose weight. It won't close. It's a five. You could try Sears. Uh -uh. Why are you eating a Caltein bar? What? They make you gain weight like crazy. Who does she think she is? I like invented her. I'm sorry I laughed at you. I'm sorry I called you fat. I'm sorry that people are so jealous of me. But I can't help it that I'm popular. Walk it off! Walk it off! Okay. You know who's looking fine tonight? Seth Mosikowski. He is your cousin. What? He's a good kisser. But today's October 3rd, so... It is October 3rd, and when I saw the movie over the weekend, it wasn't until I finished it... Um, this is, this episode is coming out much later, but it wasn't until I finished it where I was like, oh, we're going to be recording on the third. And that's like a big thing in the, in the yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So mean girl. So I, uh, so I'm, I have my 20 year list, Dustin, and I'm coming up on trying to finish all of it for 2003 mm -hmm. for us to, for us to do that episode. And I was like, and so it's getting to the point where it's like, it's hard to schedule them. Cause like there's some of them are available. Some of them are not. And I'm like, Oh shit, I'm yeah. running out of time. And so that started looking ahead and I was like, I really should just start like Venn diagramming these years a little bit so that like I can actually be more efficient with watching this load. Because what always happens sure. is I get to the end of the year and I've procrastinated or I've done too much waiting for them to appear on services. I already have. Yeah. And I'm scrambling to like rent them. Yep. And it's just a big pain in the ass. So I was like, all right, let's, let's go through 2004. And I knew I was going to get Paramount Plus uh, this month and Mean Girls is on Paramount Plus. Yep. And I was like, all right, I'm watching Mean Girls this weekend. So I sat down and watched Mean Girls, um, which came out in 2004. So it's been almost 20 years. Um, and uh, so this movie is uh, directed by Mark Waters and uh, famously screenplay uh, written by Tina Fey. Um and I think everyone listening to this this far into this episode knows what this movie is. Lindsay Lohan, yep. Rachel McAdams, Tim Meadows, Anna Gasteyer, Lizzie Kaplan, Amy Poehler, Tina Fey. But God, not even top billing. You've got uh, Lacey Chabert and um, and uh, Amanda Seyfried. Um, mm -hmm. You've got a lot of people in this movie. Um, yep. God, Tim Meadows is so funny in this movie. Yeah, he's Tim, great. Tim Meadows is hilarious. And then you just kind of forget that since it's not the 90s and the 2000s, you just don't see him in as many things. Yeah. And you forget that he's like a genius. He's yeah, like he's a comedic hilarious. genius. Yep. And um and there's a really great SNL energy to everything his character does in this movie yeah. because of him and Tina's relationship. Yep. So Mean Girls is a movie in which um Lindsay Lohan moves to, uh, moves to a new city, moves to Illinois um after a lot of time, almost her entire life in Africa with her like missionary parents or whatever they do. Um and uh, she has the high school experience, basically. Um, yeah. We meet the Plastics, um, you know, uh, played by Rachel McAdams, Lacey Chabert, and Amanda Seyfried. And then we've got um, the Lizzie Kaplan character being uh, this kind of arty, um, you know, friend mm -hmm. in the school. And um, yeah, so that's Mean Girls. Uh, the movie holds up really well, as you you might imagine. It's been yeah. it's been memed a lot. Um the whole October 3rd thing is a thing. Meme girls. Meme girls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that's really good. Um, the meme girls. Meme girls. Um, there's a whole lot of really quick jokes in this movie and really yeah. great sight gags. 
Yeah. I think three times, uh, th- there's a particular spot during a Halloween party where there's three different occasions where the whole joke that's telegraphed right away is that you're supposed to dress kind of like a whore mm-hmm. <laughs> on Halloween if you're a, yeah. a girl. Um, yeah. and, uh, and she's like, I didn't get the message. I'm dressed up as like a, like a vampire witch. And so she's got scary teeth and whatever. Yeah. And on three different occasions in the party, once when she arrives, once in once, um, af- after the party, when she's very sad and once when she leaves the party and goes to her friend's house, is there a sight gag where she, she, she comes into a room, someone sees her screams audibly and falls down. <laughs> <laughs> like she leaves the party yes. and some guy's drinking beer on like the front porch. He's like, ah! and he just falls off the <laughs> And it's otherwise she's like very upset, like, oh, I need need to leave. And it's just this quick physical, (laughs) physical joke. It's so good. And almost you would think that like we've replaced that these days with like farts or like um, or like um, uh, what do you call it up? Like politically correct, like um, humor and not like safe humor, but like the, 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 the subversive thing to do today is to make a joke about political correctness. Like for a character yeah. to say like, Oh, no, his, his, is she, him like to, to yeah. somehow like point out that there is political correctness and yeah. act like that itself is a joke. And it yeah. used to just be, no, let's just write, let's just continue to play out this meta, this, this joke that she's dressed like an actual scary witch. And then yeah, no yeah. one's used to that. Let's just remind right. the audience that she's not used to this crowd. Like yes. it serves the story and it's funny. Just, and it's, yeah. that's writing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I, I really I don't have much to say about the movie. I just wanted to quickly just come on here and say um, I still enjoy it. It's, it's been a while since I've seen it. It's been a, a good bit yeah. for me, too. And um, I think that the screenplay has really good structure. And, you know, you go through her getting there, meeting the plastics, and then she's supposed to infiltrate the plastics and learn stuff about them so that they can make fun of them. And then she sort of kind of becomes them too much. And then she's actively trying to take them down in a different way for different reasons. Um, yep. and then there's a the whole thing. Um, and, uh, I think it's just a fun premise, um, even in 2004 to, to, to commentate on contemporary teen culture and the way that you do that, because it, it doesn't work to just have a new student from another city because they're yeah. still like an American kid who's yep. growing up in the school system. And so yep. it, it helps that our, our window to the audience is, someone who has been homeschooled. She's grew up in a different country. So she's like, you know, she's white and American, yeah. but she has not grown up with the American experience and right. American childhood. And so she's not sheltered, but she's naive to the competitive social bullshit inherent yeah. in our culture and many Western cultures. Yep. Um, I wanted to play something for you. Mm-hmm. Um, and for the audience, uh, there's just little moments in this movie that are uh, terrific. At one point, um, she's playing the plastics against each other. There's this character played by Lacey Chabert. And her character's name, first of all, her name's funny. Do you remember what her character's name is? is it Gretchen Wieners. Gretchen Wieners. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and so she's got Gretchen all spun up about uh, th- about the fact that um, Regina George, the Rachel McAdams character, might hate her. Yeah. And so we randomly cut to this scene in class where she's written she's 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 written this speech about she's written this essay about brutus and caesar and it's really Mm -hmm. about her and regina and it's just really brilliant and that's it's it's a complete tina fey writing so and and her delivery is amazing so this is a 30 second (laughs) little joke here why should caesar get to stomp around like a giant while the rest of us try not to get smushed under his big feet what's so great about caesar Brutus is just as cute as Caesar. Okay, Brutus is just as smart as Caesar. People totally like Brutus just as much as they like Caesar. And when did it become okay for one person to be the boss of everybody, huh? Because that's not what Rome is about. We should totally just stab Caesar! Gretchen Wieners had cracked. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just that's just a terrific performance, but like yeah. that's that's a that's a writer having a lot of fun yeah. with a high school setting and the yes. fact that this character who's supposedly vapid suddenly has this very insightful parallel yep. to 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 Caesar and Brutus. Right. It's it's really it's really great. Yeah. Um and so the last thing I want to say about this too, before I just want to get your thoughts on it, but like, I think that the characters are really awesome. And I think that some executives, if this were 
well, I say if this were made today, if this were adapted today or whatever, requeled or soft yeah. rebooted today, executives might mistake this sort of concept and think that they could make it stretch for a television show or mm. streaming mini miniseries. And, um, and that would be a mistake because the characters instead just make a 90 minute film pop off the screen and remain tight with these yeah. memorable yeah. characters and this just kind of f- hilarious story instead of having to justify. Cause I, that's the, that's the thought behind a lot of like six or eight episode mini series or limited series these days is people just are like, Oh yeah. Like we'll just, we'll just find, we'll just flesh out character, which is what you should do. But except what they're doing is they're just padding scenes yeah. and the pace yeah. is just slow and it's really not tight at all. Yeah. Um, so God love Tina Fey for this, for the, for bringing us the script. And I, I wish she would write more films. Um, yeah. I wish she were still doing that. And I don't, uh, I don't, I mean, who, who knows why I didn't read the history about why she wrote this. If she decided to stop sure. writing screenplays or if she just was like doing it as a favor in the first place. And I don't know. Um, right. But it's, it's a really iconic movie and uh, yeah. it's, it's still great. Uh, every, everyone's great. Lindsay Lohan's great in it. Rachel McAdams is really great in it. She's playing a character yeah. that she doesn't, hasn't really played since. Yep. Um, Tina Fey herself is really good in this movie. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, um, every, everyone, everyone's great. It's, it's great. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. I have not seen this in probably 15 ish years. Um, like it's been a long time and, um, but I like it and there's certain jokes that still stick in my brain and, um, and moments that, you know, are forever just like iconic, you know, you use that word. And I think this film is iconic and, um, yeah, man. I, I don't know. I, I really do need to rewatch this. I know my wife loves this movie and has yeah. seen it more frequently than I have, but, um, but yeah, it, it, it's, it's a great movie. And I remember even when I watched it years ago that it was like, yeah, this is a well-made movie. Mm-hmm. And, and even at that time, like it would have been kind of like normal to be like, Ooh, Lindsay Lohan's, you know, whatever. But it's like, there's no denying that she was great in that movie. Yeah. And there's no denying that, that like every single cast member is just on fire. And this is one of those like lightning in a bottle type movies that you you can't replicate. And so if you talk about reboot, requel, whatever, it, it would, it would never, ever live up to it because it's, it's a number of things. It's the writing, it's the performances, it's just the general vibe of it. And I just don't think you can do that anymore. And, and, and it's unfortunate. I don't think that Hollywood would allow it anymore. And, and what I mean by that is like, when's the last time a, there was just a straight comedy released in theaters that had massive success critically and commercially. Yeah. It's $17 million budget and made $130 million. Yeah. And, and not only that, but stood the test of time following that. Yeah. Like I, I, I would argue that that film only becomes bigger as time goes on. Right. Yeah. It's one of those weird movies where, you know, you, you mentioned 90 minutes, right? Like in 90 minutes, they don't do that anymore. They don't no. make a 90 minute. <laughs> first of all, they don't make straight comedies. They yeah. don't make 90 minute movies and they certainly don't make straight comedy, 90 minute movies with characters that are iconic that last forever. Like everyone will always remember Regina George, you know, like that, that's just like, it's part of the thing now. Right. And, and the term, the plastics, right? Like this is all iconic, like nomenclature that, that just like it permeated the culture in a way that things don't anymore. And, and I think that that's, it's such a strange thing because yeah, I mean, I think that if this were requeled, you would, you would struggle to make anything half as good and you would also struggle to even get it made. And that, that's the point that I think I'm trying to, to hammer home here is like, this is a, this is a movie that doesn't happen anymore. And so if you want to enjoy something like this, like you have to go back in time to enjoy it. And, and I'll also say this while we're talking about back in time, this is a movie that's set in its day, right? Like this is pre social media, yeah. like, you know, that kind of thing. And the temptation obviously would be like, Oh, well we need to update it with those social media. We need to update it with cyberbullying. We need to update it, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, no, I think that that this is a fairly timeless movie. Mm -hmm. And I think that it being made pre social media and pre iPhone is actually the, 
the best thing that could have happened because if it was made in 2011 even it would be too reliant on technology as a form of bullying and too reliant on technology as a as a you know as a part of our lives and i think it would have dated the film and as it is the film becomes timeless yeah and as it is y- you can you can take the cr- like that the, the foundation of what the bullying is in 2004 and say this this applies in new facets now yeah right but if you had done the reverse i think it wouldn't have been nearly as important because again like as it is if if a 30 year old watched it in 04 they would say this reminds me of my childhood yeah and if a current teenager watched it in 04 this reminds me of my childhood this yeah. reminds me of my now and if a and if a teenager watches it now they still say oh this reminds me of now yeah and and i think that that's a really rare thing and so i think the film is an achievement on a lot of different in a lot of different ways and it's unique because it would not i'm not going to say it could not be made anymore but it would not be made anymore and that's a shame because man i i long for the days where people made in 90 minutes a solid story that was memorable and worth worth remembering for decades to come and they don't do that anymore. So what's interesting about this movie <clears throat> is it was based on a parenting book. Mm. Like the screenplay was based on a like a parenting book. Um, it was written by Rosalind Wiseman. Okay. And it it's it was it's called, it was called Queen Bees and Wannabes. And it, it okay. was it was focuses it focuses on the ways in which girls in high schools form cliques and on patterns of aggressive teenage girl behavior and how to deal with them. So yeah, that, that I guess was adapted, uh, for, and then, uh, for the movie, then, you know, we've got this musical that, that it was adapted for. And I thought that was really cool when that, when I heard about that, I was like, that's really cool and good for Tina Fey for, um, for, I believe also writing the musical. Um, let me see here. Well, well co- let's see, uh, in a book by Tina Fey. Okay. Yeah. So she didn't write like the music or the lyrics, but she wrote like the, the book, which is like the story for the musical. Yeah. 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 And I don't know if you know this, they made a film adaptation of that. Yes. So that's coming out in January mm-hmm. and it's going to be in theaters. It was supposed to be on Paramount Plus originally. And, and yep. so Parenting Book became Mean Girls and then they made that a musical and now they're doing a movie adaptation of a musical adaptation of, of film. Musical. Yes. So I'm okay with this because Tina Fey and Tim Meadows are coming back and reprising, reprising their roles, which is great. Yeah. Tina Fey yep. has written the screenplay for this movie. Um, and it's an adaptation, it's not a remake, it's an adaptation of the musical. So right. it's going to be, a, it's a whole different thing. It's, there's going to be songs and that kind of stuff. So, which yeah. I'm usually a fan of, like, I, I'm fine with musicals being adapted to film. I just, you need to actually use film language and not just adapt stage blocking. Right. Yep. Um, but you know me, like I, I really, we'll talk about this at some point on the show. Cause it's the 20 year anniversary is coming up, but rent, I really love the film adaptation of rent. I've said that for years. I've, I've always talked about how I love, I enjoyed that. Yeah. People really love dream girls. So anyways, um, I'm looking forward to that, um, myself at least. So yeah. Yeah. I forgot about that. And I, Jenna Fisher is going to be in that. So I was like, yes. Oh, that's right. That's, that's how I'm remember hearing about it, but yep. a lot of the people from the stage show are coming back and reprising their roles and stuff, which yep. is also cool. Yep. They don't always awesome. do that. So no. Okay. All right. Anyway, I just wanted to rave about mean girls. Sweet. It's, it's very fetch. Very fetch. <laughs> hey, <laughs> why don't you fetch us another review? <laughs> I'll fetch you guys another episode next week. 